Hi guys! I'm going to do my uh, products I regret buying tag. Um, I did this ages and ages and ages ago and I kind of feel like it should be a regular thing, like at least every six months or so, um, because I get a really big collection of things that really didn't do anything for me. Um, so this is kind of the first instalment. This is just kind of what I could grab um, in a few minutes and think, yeah, all those things I really regret buying, but it could be a really long video, so I thought I'll do this first instalment, kind of put those things away, and um, in the next few weeks I might look over the rest of my stuff and uh, get enough for another video. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you want to see the next instalment. Um, okay, in no particular order, just from what is in front of me, I'm going to talk about, first, the e.l.f. blushes. Now, when I first did a review of these e.l.f. blushes, or it was in my haul video because I already swatched them and I wasn't impressed, um, I kind of have the feeling that the response was mixed as to whether or not people agreed with me. And again, I mean, I have some other e.l.f. stuff in here. Um, I think very much with e.l.f. it's hit and miss. I could buy these again and they could be absolutely perfect, exactly how I want them. Um, for someone it'll be amazing, for someone else it won't be great. The only thing with that is, if you do buy something and you really want to repurchase it, you might buy it again and it's a completely different product. I don't know why that is, but it find, I find it with lots and lots of things from e.l.f. Um, like brushes and stuff, every time you buy something it could be completely different. So I don't really understand why they do that, but or for what reason. Um, but these are really, really, really terrible pigmentation. I love, love, love the packaging. I love the idea of them. I love the colours that I got. Um, this one is... Tickled pink, and if you see, there's just no, <laughs> it literally does not matter how many times, I'm like scrubbing, 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 it doesn't matter how many times I do it, there's nothing, there's just no colour, there might just be the teensy, teensiest bit. No, I really don't think there is. There's no colour that comes off in them at all. Um, I got Tickled Pink, I got Candied Coral, which again is the same. It's very shimmery, kind of has like a gold um, running through it, but there's not an awful lot of colour at all. I'm very, very sure if there is. And I got Got a Glow, which was like a highlight. Um, and I had high hopes for this one because I thought if the other ones are shimmery, this one might be good. And it is okay. Compared to the other ones, this is probably the one that I might consider using um, because this, if you see, if you get a real rub of it, you do get some pigment there and you do get a little bit of shimmer. But for the ones that actually you want a pigment, you know, the actual blushes, the ones that you want pigment for, they are absolutely terrible. So I would really, really, really not recommend those at all. Um, I really have to do this quicker, you know. This is not full reviews, it's just products that I don't like. Um, so I don't like those, obviously. Um, I'm going to just tell you about the other e.l.f. thing that I've got here as well, which again, in the last video, when I made a video that was reviewing this particular palette and the uh, corrective one as well, lots of people said, oh, mine's fine. And then lots of other people said, no, mine's exactly the same as yours. So again, e.l.f. is very hit and miss. Um, but this, again, absolutely the worst pigment ever. I'm not going to get into the swatching and stuff, but it just is. Um, it would give you no coverage whatsoever. It's kind of tinted moisturiser at most. And if you want in a, a complete coverage concealer, that's you want more than tinted moisturiser coverage, so not great. Um, next. Now this, I wouldn't necessarily say is Avon's fault as to why I don't like this palette, but it's the Smoky Eyes True Colour Quad Palette, um, which of course looks very Chanel in the packaging. Love the packaging, really, really nice. Um, and I do have another one of these. And I'm not that keen on that one either. But I thought I'd pick this one for the reason being that this is the Smoky Eyes palette. It doesn't even have a black. I think, at the very least, the Smoky Eyes should have a black. And I don't know why it's got a pink. It's a really, really odd colour choice for me. Um, and I've actually never used it. I've swatched it and it's not very strong. And I don't think I could get a Smoky Eye out of that. I think if you're not going to use heavily pigmented products, which again, this, this is probably... Makeup wise, my main bugbear is if there is no colour payoff. Um, so I'm probably going to say that a lot, but if they're not going to use heavily pigmented products, then at the very least they need a really good black to then darken up a smoky eye. I just, I think it's a rubbish, rubbish set of colours. Um, but Avon in general is really, really good products, it's just that I really dislike. 
Um, now this one's probably going to be a surprise one because I haven't seen this on anyone else's kind of not great list, um, but the benefit, they're real. The reason that I wish I hadn't bought it is it was so expensive for something that's not that great for me. Um, I really dislike how difficult it is to take off. It's not a waterproof mascara. I know it's long wearing, but it shouldn't be that difficult to take off. My Liz Earl Cleanse and Polish, that, I need to do that at least twice to get it off. Um, an oily, mo an oily um, makeup remover would be better, but I hate oily makeup removers because I feel like it leaves like a film over my eyes when I open them afterwards. I really don't like them. So for me, that's, that's really the problem. It's how difficult it is to remove. The application is nice. It's not absolutely amazing nice, but if it wasn't so difficult to take off, it probably would become my everyday mascara because with one coat, it does leave my lashes quite nice, but it's not nice enough for me to warrant how difficult it is to remove. So that's the reason that I regret buying this because it was very expensive for me not to be using it all the time. This is kind of um, a special occasion mascara and I don't go out enough to actually get this used up before it dries up completely. So. That was a waste of money for me and I would definitely, definitely not be repurchasing it. Um, Urban Decay Lipsticks. This is an Urban Decay Lipsticks on the whole. Um, I bought a couple of these before I went to work for them last year and unfortunately when I went to work for them I got loads more. And I did obviously wear them a lot because um, I was selling them. And I will say, I love, love, love the colours. Uh, this particular, this is sellout. This in particular is a great colour for me. Um, I love the colours, I love the smell, it's like almost licorice aniseed smell, um, but they taste horrible. You don't want something on your lips that tastes as horrible as these. It's like really, really bitter and awful, just, they just taste awful. Really, really dislike them. The packaging is terrible because this little dagger falls off and then how do you get it out? Without that, you need to get a knife down there or your nail to pull it out. It's the worst packaging design ever. It might look cute, but that's not, mm. it's the thinnest, thinnest little piece of metal that is keeping that on there. It's just the worst, worst design. So although I like the idea of it, and I like the colours, and I like the smell of it, it tastes horrible, so I never ever wear them. So what a waste of money, because they're like £13 or something. Um, next is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. Lots of people recommended I try this, because I was looking for um, an equivalent to my NARS Sheer Glow. And I wanted something, not necessarily the coverage of Nice Sheer Glow, but I was looking for something that matched my skin as well. Now I will give you this, it did match my skin nicely. It's um, rose ivory, I think perhaps I should have just gone for ivory because it's a little bit pink for me. Um, and the NARS is a little bit yellower tone, so I think perhaps that's more my, my colouring. Um, I will get, it was a really, really nice match. But the coverage is horrible, it's streaky, it's drying. And I used this for about a week. I really tried to persevere with it because I wanted to like it. I tried it with all sorts of primers underneath and it's just horrible. Really, really dislike it. I didn't want to do a whole review on this is a horrible product. Um, but for me, this did not work at all and I definitely wouldn't recommend that you buy it. Um, okay, this is kind of on to skincare and hair care now. First of all, I'm going to mention the Organic Botanics Face Soothing Cleansing Balm. I've seen this all over the web fantastic rave reviews because it's just like Lizzo Cleanse and Polish but it's so much cheaper. It's really not anything like Lizzo Cleanse and Polish. I want to try the one from Superdrug because apparently that one actually is. It's more like a creamy formula but this is really greasy. It's like a kind of gritty... <sighs> smells... I don't know... like botanic stuff. I just don't like the smell of it at all really. Um, but it's, it's kind of gritty when it comes out and then it goes onto your skin and it's really thick and gloopy and oily and awful. I feel like it leaves a residue on my skin afterwards. Again, this goes back to me not liking to use oils to remove my makeup. If you don't like, if you don't mind that, you might really, really like this. But for me, this is horrible compared to Lizzo. Um, and I'm totally not being snobbish at all because if this had worked, I would have been the first one to give it a glowing review. For me, this is nothing like it. It's a completely different texture. And I hate that it's oily. I hate putting oily things on my face. I hate it. I don't see how I can clean my face with oil, it's awful. So I hate that. Um, next is this Clinique Anti-Blemish Solutions. This is actually nearly all gone because I did persevere with this. It's not cheap Clinique. It's not mega mega expensive but it's more expensive than I would usually pay for skincare for definite. Um, it's Clearing Moisturiser uh, which is supposed to do a similar thing to my Clean and Clear I would imagine but because it's Clinique you would think it was going to be better. No, it actually didn't do anything 
It didn't smooth my skin, it didn't moisturise my skin, it didn't clear up any spots, and again, it tastes horrible. If you put something on your face or near your mouth, it's probably going to get into your mouth at some point, and this is awful, really awful. Like, every time it like just got into the corners of my mouth or anything, it was just the worst taste ever. It smells not very nice, it's just... It's just not a very nice product, I don't think, um, and it definitely didn't work for me. Um, this might be another strange one because I know lots of people love Soap and Glory and so do I. Um, and you can see I've only used this a few times because there's most of it's left. And I might try it again, but um, the few times that I have tried it, it's really, really put me off. It's called um, Face Soap and Clarity 3-in-1 Daily Detox Vitamin C Wash. Thing is, I can't actually see what the 3-in-1 is. It says, oh, smooths, cleans, smooths, cleans and scrubs, okay. But is scrubs not the same as smooths? I don't know. I'm not convinced it's three in one. Um, it says it's skin brightening. I never believe things like that. Um, and it does actually say somewhere on it that it's not a soap. Oh, there it is. This is a high-tech, non-drying foaming facial wash. This was really, really drying. I actually was left with dry patches on my face after this. And I've got oily combination skin. So for me to get dry patches, there's really only this and the Neutrogena Vitamin, um, the, what was it? Neutrogena Grapefruit Scrub, which I still use occasionally because I still love the smell, um, that has left me with dry patches if I overuse it. But this, after one use, left me with dry patches. I think this would be good for if I'm having a particularly oily day or if I've got really bad skin and I need to dry it out a little bit before I put some moisture back in, then maybe, but otherwise, no. Not great for me at all. Really, really drying, which I was disappointed with because it specifically says it's non-drying, but hey-ho. And um, the last uh, kind of skincare product is this Burt's Bees Radiance Body Lotion. I bought this because Juicy Tuesday talks about it all the time and says how amazing it is and it leaves this gorgeous sheen on your skin. Um, and I saw it was in the sale and I got this with something else in a little set. Um, I think it was not this, well obviously not January now, last year, this time last year from Debenhams. And I was so excited to use it and I was only going to use a little bit of it and then I was going to save it for going out and stuff. And I hate the smell. I was so disappointed. I do love the sheen that it leaves on my skin. Absolutely gorgeous. But otherwise, I hate the smell. It was such a disappointment because I so wanted to love it. And it's something that I... When I put something all over myself and take the time to kind of lotion myself up, I really, really want to feel pampered and I want to feel good about myself. And if I smell what I consider to be bad, then that's not going to really work for me. So massive disappointment because it's a nice product but for me it's just a personal thing. I really don't like the smell of this product. Um, and lastly I have two things that go together and it's these James Brown Rich Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. I actually bought something else at the same time as this. It's like photo something. I don't know. It was like a treatment and that was also rubbish. Um, these were not cheap. I think they were like eight or nine pounds each from Boots. Surprisingly, I've used more of the shampoo than I have of the conditioner, which is really unlike me. I don't know why that is. Um, I think perhaps I took, the sh I took the conditioner out earlier than I took out the shampoo, I don't know. Uh, but I really didn't like them. Even, with, even after using the conditioner, my, my hair didn't feel moisturised even in the littlest bit. It was still dry afterwards. It felt like I hadn't, felt like I'd just shampooed it and left it. And this is supposed to be like, this is high end hair care for me, I'm not spending any more than this on a shampoo. So I was really disappointed because I don't spend this much money on shampoo. This was really expensive for me to, to spend money on and then it just didn't work. I'm trying to remember what the other one's called. Photo. I should have brought it in and I forgot it. But that wasn't very good anyway. Oh my god, I can't even believe this. I was going to make a video. Right. I was going to make a video on the products that had surprised me that I really, really liked. Um, and that had surpassed my expectations. And I've been looking for this, which is Soap and Glory's Wish Upon a Jar. I literally spent about an hour looking for this. Lost most of my filming light in the meantime and then thought, fine, I'll make this video instead. And literally, just as I'm finishing this video, I look over and there it is, right next to me, on my vanity table. I can't even believe it. I'm not having a tremendous amount of luck with YouTube lately. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not fantastic. Um, I have lost all of my videos and I'm really keeping everything crossed that they come back. <laughs> um, I've heard kind of mixed reports as to whether or not it's possible, but apparently if you are a YouTube partner then they are saved for a certain amount of time or something, I don't know. 
because um, people get whole channels back and if they get channels back they get videos back then it is possible it just depends on how helpful YouTube wants to be um, but I'm trying to come to terms with the fact that I've lost over a hundred videos um, but you know it's very sad it's very sad for someone uh, someone with such a small life as me <sighs> it's very very sad but anyway they were all the things that I regret buying um, kind of part one let's call it because I know there are more things than this. This is just what I picked up in my first kind of sweep of my beauty cupboard um, and makeup stuff. So if you want to see the next instalment, then leave me a comment below and let me know. If you don't like videos like this, I won't make another one because what's the point if you don't want to watch it? Um, but I am going to make a products that surprise me, products that surpass my expectations, that kind of video. Because there's so many things that I bought thinking, oh, I'll buy this, I'll try this because it's new or whatever. And then I've really loved them because it takes a lot to be put into my main rotation. Um, just because once I find things that I like, I don't generally switch them up. I'll buy things because they're new and I want to review them and stuff, but to actually stay in my everyday or every week rotation, it, they must be good products. So some of them have made it in and I thought they deserved their own video. Um, so I will make that soon. But thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please go and subscribe and check out my other videos on my other channels, which I will link below.